I knew I was going to start my own company one day, but I had I set myself a syllabus of things I had to learn. Uh, so I had to learn business. I was reading about startups all the time. Um, I invested in some of my friends who started their own companies just so I can watch what happens. Fundraising for us is it, it's a daily practice. So you get up, you fundraise, you get up, you fundraise. It's something that you think about every single day. You learn over time the implications of an institutional investor versus an angel, which would then inform my strategy next time I do this. <laughs> but I only knew that by doing it. Um, and I feel like now I'm much more prepared to do it again, much more efficiently. You know, if you don't want to do a lot of work, I, I would suggest a whole business, other business, because this is, in, in biotech and when it comes to funding, you're doing sprints and marathons on a daily basis. Knowing what I know about the subtleties of investors and who invests in what and why and how, um, I would be able to very quickly move into the areas that, that make the most sense for us. We uh, approached all these people initially as mentors. We got to know them very, very well as mentors. It also gave them a chance to really get to know us. Um, because it's a seed round, we, we want and expect that there will be a lot of transparency. So we didn't try very hard to hide the things that we think are ugly about our business. Start developing relationships sooner, even if you're not, I mean, even when you're not even planning on raising money yet, you just want to con always continuously expand your network. When we tried to think how the system might change and who would get interested in putting in seed funding, I think we're more excited about the big pharma and other life science companies. You know, they are in a perfect storm. They are looking for new ways of doing things. A very effective way of them getting a big bang for the box is to put some money into early startup companies. And these companies, you, a lot of them have really good cash um, position right now, and so they're healthily investing in, in new companies. And so we've, we've gone after those corporates, and that is helping us um, gain traction with the pure venture capital uh, world too. My belief and advice would be ensure that the, trans, that the technology is really transformational. Incremental advances are not really very valuable to customers or uh, investors. We surround these innovators with the help that they need, and then we also give them some funding to get them started, and then we work a lot with them as they move along their pathway to proof of concept with who they need as far as financial support. New technologies take a great deal of time uh, in order to mature sufficiently to develop into companies. Quite often that could be 10 years or often 20 years. And so the idea of an evergreen fund is that we invest in startup companies without any fixed idea about when we have to exit those companies. In the beginning, we thought about a very traditional, let's go to the VCs, let's get the money we need, and we'll get up and running. I think in the beginning, after a while, that didn't quite make sense for us. We knew we had a customer that really needed our products, and maybe they were the ones who could partner with us. And that's actually been our first approach, is to go to the customer and actually see if would they be willing to invest in us. Uh, and then th through partnering with them, could we actually create a product together that meets their needs specifically. And that's really the approach we're taking now. The direction, I think, in which traditional venture capitalists are moving is um, we're very happy to invest once you've shown us that you have customers. Now, that's maybe a little bit of a translation from the lean startup philosophy that's been being applied in tech these days. It doesn't perfectly translate to biotech. Uh, but the point is well taken. Instead of building it and hoping they will come, Let's only build it when we know someone's already there. So one of the hard things about meeting with potential investors, especially venture capitalists, is not taking their advice, kind of ignoring their advice and going, going your own path for a while. Um, they see lots of failures, but as an entrepreneur, first-time first entrepreneur especially, you're not aware of failure. Um, so you sometimes have to listen to or not listen to advice from people who failed a lot um, because it doesn't necessarily apply to your situation. You're, you're, you've got to think that you're the only one that's going to succeed. I was talking to a, a young lady from a company that desperately needs funding. And I described to her, our strategist said, you need to do it every day. Everyone in the company needs to think of this as something that's vital. You know, money, no science. You need to find a way to think of these programs as it has to be part of your culture. And she said, the grants that are available to us are too small. And I thought, just take all of them. Just, just, just put them all together, make a quilt and cover yourself.